let's shift gears one more time and talk about sort of downstream treatments, metastatic colon cancer, after initial lines of therapy, through maintenance, and of course we've got uh, more treatment choices in this refractory space and new medicines, um, new side effects, new data. Um, and Johanna, let me first get to you. I know you're a major referral center in your part of the country. Um, what percentage patient is getting to this third line uh, in your world? Yeah, I mean, I think that more and more patients with colon cancer, given how good the treatments are up front, are making it to third line therapy. Now, I'm just going to give my own, you know, sort of biased estimate, but I would say 70, 80 percent, but that's probably my biased estimate. Tony, I mean, the average age where you live is like 90. So it, how's, how's healthy? Huh? 90. A healthy. good 90, the tanned 90. Yeah, plastic um, surgery does wonders. So are are you seeing an older population that does make it? Uh, obviously, you know. Yeah, actually, interestingly, we do we do have uh, uh, a lot of older patients, but we have a number of uh, younger patients. I mean, it's again a, a referral center from across the west western part of the country. Uh, so we see all of them, but yes, the, even the older patients are making it to third line. And I'd say, you know, it's, it's a 70, 80 percent is, is probably uh, the right figure. Now, again, we, we, we do have a skewed patient population across all our centers uh, because we are referral centers. So you're more likely to see the patients that are going to make it to the third line. Who's the patient, Alan, that's not going to make it? Well, the patient who's not going to make it is a patient with peritoneal disease. Uh, I think right-sided uh, women with right-sided peritoneal metastatic disease have do do very poorly. Again, this gets to the molecular subtypes, which which I think will sort of help define that. Uh, w unfortunately, we know that right off the bat. The BRAF mutant patient is the patient with the BRAF mutation is very unlikely to get to that point. And so uh, the patients otherwise, the larger por portion of patients, I'm not sure it makes a heck of a lot of difference what order you do in what treatment because these patients tend to have disease that responds and, and that you get good periods of, of time, even with holidays, which, which we can build in. But I think the patients with peritoneal disease are usually the patients who do very poorly. You know, in pancreas cancer, we see a lot of what I'll call therapeutic nihilism. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where people say, you know, from not necessarily oncologists, but yeah. from their primary care doctor or something like that. Is anybody seeing any of that here, an older patient where, you know, they just sort of burn out and don't want, they're okay, but don't want it? Um, John? Rarely. 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 So it's not so much in this yeah. disease compared to the other, Tony? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a different disease. And again, you have, you have the sense that you've responded to a line or two of therapy and you've went for a while your mind frame adjusts a little bit differently than a pancreas cancer patient. And again, all, all most patients do uh, search on the internet and they uh, you know, tend to uh, uh, think that pancreas cancer is a disease that overwhelmingly will take all of them and they have this nihilism. On the other hand, with colon cancer, uh, they see a different story. So it affects, uh, it affects them and how they view their uh, future therapies differently. In a patient that you don't think is going to go to resection, do you begin your first visit or early visits talking about these lines of therapy and set that stage for patients? Well, what I do is I don't, I say we're going to follow the bouncing ball. You know, you're hmm. going to follow the disease. Yeah. Uh, I don't really talk about lines of therapy. I talk about a strategy to bob and weave. You know, <laughs> I tend not to start with full fox because I, we've often burned that. If you go six or seven cycles, a patient gets neuropathy, then in fact, you probably can't revisit that or be hesitant to revisit it. Uh, so we start with full theory on average, but I talk about strategic moves. Uh, but I, I will often, if a patient's doing very well on a, on a full theory, let's say, I might go to every three weeks or every four weeks. I just try to, try to keep the patient going. Often with high volume disease to begin with, I might keep, not give them a holiday per se. But, but I, we do early on talk about the strategy, which is I, I tell them don't write the dates there in their calendar in pen, write mm -hmm. it in pencil because I, cause I don't. And one of the most striking things to me is how many patients will come to me after 12 cycles of full fox or 12 oh, of yeah. this magic. as if there's a magic cycles. number. Yeah. And I, th I think that, that uh, we avoid. And the other trick is to avoid the toxicities that can be devastating, steatohepatitis. Mm -hmm. Patients who get too much chemotherapy, some of them will develop fatty liver and you may get a big spleen, those kinds of things. So, so I, I really, we very much play it by ear and watch the patients. 
if a patient, they'll say they've got a wedding to go to at such and such a time, then that's what we build around. We want to have them chemo free for, for that period of time. And I think with the very effective therapies and many of them, we have that luxury. We should be able to do that. So the really important point the many that you made, but is that that frontline strategy needs to in some way have the downstream in mind. Yeah. Yes. That if you burn them too much in the beginning, you'll never get there. You know, is, yes. that, is that right? Absolutely. I, you know, we all, I think, use mm -hmm. marathon race strategy yes. as the terms that we use with patients. Agreed? Absolutely. And I think also patients, they, they need to hear a few times, especially when they're first diagnosed, that this is going to be a chronic treatment. Mm -hmm. I have so many patients that say, okay, am I done? Mm -hmm. And you want to tell them that we're going to build in holidays, but we're, you know, it's the marathon.